Hello, human people. Welcome to the Let's Learn Python tutorial series. This is unit number one, topic number two. We're actually going to get in and do a little bit of coding. We're going to talk about print statements. We're going to talk about variables. We're going to talk about variable types. And we're going to hit you with a challenge at the end of this lesson. Let's do it. Here we are in Notepad++. Uh, I'm going to type in some code as, as I go. Feel free to pause the video if you need to catch up with me or jump ahead if you just want to do that as well. All right, so last time we did a simple program printing hello world. So let's just jump back into that and let's use that as our starting off point. Okay, so we'll notice in this print statement that we've got a couple of elements. We have the brackets that are kind of wrapping the whole print statement. And then we have in quotation marks, there's the letters H-E-L-L-O-W-R-L-D. And what this is, is it's a literal string of characters. So what that means is that it's not something that we can go in and change. We have just literally taken those characters and strung them together to form a word, a sentence, whatever. And then we're asking that to be printed to the console. So this is great. It's kind of like when you used to make those little necklaces as a kid where you put all the little beads on a string. That's why it's called a string, but we'll get into that in a future unit. But it's literal. It's not a variable in any way. It can't change. Once we hard code it in, it's there. Uh, and that's not ideal for programming, and we'll see that later as we start to touch on variable. I just want to hit on that. When we see those double quotation marks or single quotation marks, those characters inside of it, including the space, are just kind of these literals uh, that we're printing out to the screen. So there's a couple of things around print statements that we should be aware of. So I'll give you a couple examples. One is uh, there's a neat little thing you can do with uh, triple quotes where you can do these multi-line print statements similar to a multi-line comment. So we could do hello world full of humans All right so I'm just gonna go ahead and save my program now again I've already saved this but if it's your first time you might want to do a save as remember to include the dot py when you're saving your file so I'm gonna save it I'm gonna hop over to PowerShell and in PowerShell I'm gonna run it so Python space unit one topic two dot py that's what my file is called and I hit run and I'm gonna see hello world hello world full of humans and you'll notice it maintained my format it kept each of them on its own line even though it was contained within a single print statement so it was a triple line print statement using the triple quotes and the triple quotes at the top and bottom but yet it maintained the integrity of the of the spacing in between that which is fantastic you'll notice the regular one the print hello world it did jump down to the next line at the end of that statement. So next, let's just look at how we can handle it if we don't want it to jump down to the next line. I'm gonna get rid of this for a second, and we're gonna take just the characters from the word hello, and we're gonna imagine printing them individually. So when we go to print this, what's gonna happen is that print statement by default jumps to a new line. So I'm gonna save, I'm gonna jump over to PowerShell, and you'll see that it prints them on individual lines. That's not super helpful for what we're trying to do. So let's jump back here for a second. We're gonna add something to these print statements. So before the ending parentheses, so after the quotation marks, I'm gonna put comma, end equals, and then I'm just gonna do empty quotes. Now I use singles, you could use doubles, it doesn't really matter, I'll show you, equals singles. And you'll notice I didn't put anything in there, I just left them empty so I opened and then immediately closed okay and what that does actually I'll, I'll delete it from the last one I'll leave that one as it is and what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the end behavior of the print statement so instead of jumping to a new line at the end of the print statement it's just gonna not do anything so let's have a look at how that runs I'm gonna save that I'm gonna hop back over to PowerShell and I'll just clear the screen here and then I'll run it and bam you'll see it printed hello all on one line, okay? Because those end equals with the empty quotes told it that it should not jump to a new line at the end of the code, all right? So that's one thing in there I wanted to touch on in terms of print statements. And again, what's inside those quotes is just, it's called a string, it's just a string of characters that I'm put together. One last thing before we move on from prints is a special character called backslash n. So you can do something like this. Hello, backslash n, world. Now you'll notice all of this is inside of the quotation marks. I didn't leave the quotes at any point, but it's not gonna print the backslash n. What happens in Python and a lot of other languages like Java and so on, is the backslash character is reserved. So it actually triggers 
what's called a special character event. So the backslash n triggers what's called a new line event within the print statement. So what will happen is the backslash tells the code to look at the next letter, which is an n, and then that combination of backslash n tells it to jump to a new line and then continue with the rest of the code. So when I save that and I run it, you're going to see hello on one line and world on the other, right? Because the backslash n character triggers it to jump down to the next line. All right. So now that we've talked about print statements, it's time for us to talk a little bit about variables. Variables come in all kinds of different types. We're going to hit on a couple of the basic types. So that we're going to start with something called an integer. For those of you who don't know from the old math world, an integer is any non-decimal value. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up, and the negatives, negative 1, negative 2, all the way down. So an integer is any non-decimal value, okay, which is great. We're going to work a lot with integers when we deal with numbers uh, from a user. We're going to talk about something called a float. This is a decimal or non-decimal value with a dot zero on the end. Typically, we use floats for decimal values specifically. We're going to see a string, which we already saw, a string of characters. And we're going to see a Boolean. So these are the ones we're going to talk about first, a true false value. When we work with variables, the thing that's so cool about variables when we're coding is that variables allow us to give a name and quantify a type for something that may contain different values at different times during execution. So there's so many examples of this, but uh, if you think about any online profile that you have, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, where you have, you know, your name, your uh, nickname, your pictures, or whatever, all of these are being stored as variables. And when you update your profile picture, it's simply changing where the variable for profile picture points to a different file name. Or when you change your last name, it's changing where the last name variable points. It points to a different string than it used to point to. And none of the code has to change. No one has to go in at Facebook and manually change their code uh, in order to change your last name because the code is written in a variable way. It's written so that as you update this information, it's automatically updating the variables, which is automatically updating what you see on the screen because instead of asking for a hard-coded last name, it's just pulling up whatever the current person's last name variable is. And so this is where we see that powerful, is this container style of variables in, in programming. So let's give a variable a name. Now in Python, we typically use lowercase characters and underscores to separate words. It's a convention in other programming languages. We use camel case and whatever. use whatever. Just know that you can't put spaces in the names. That's really important. And there are other reserved things that you may want to be careful of. So I'm going to do my var. And let's say we want it equal to 10. So that's going to be an integer type. And we know that because we've put a non-decimal value in. So we can do something called printing the type of it. So we can do print type of my var. And notice the brackets. Open one for print, type, type is a function. Open another one, and I'm sending that function, my variable, and asking it to return the type. So let's check this out, let's print this. Save, and we print, and it says that it is an int. An int is short for an integer. So it's telling us that that variable that we've created, after assigning it a value of 10, it is in fact an integer. Okay, that's great information. So let's do this with a couple more variables of the other types. So I've created three more variables. I've created a myVar2, myVar3, and myVar4. So my variable 2 I've set equal to 0 0.5, which should be a float type because it's a decimal value. My var 3 notice I've used those quotation marks, the same ones we use in the print statement. That's going to be a string. And then my var 4 I've set to true it with a capital T in Python. And you'll notice it turned yellow with my nice little Python saving in Nobel++ to signify that it's a Boolean. Now, I'm going to just take that print statement of the type, and I'm going to bring it down, and we'll, we'll just print all four of the data types. You'll notice I use things like copy or cut and paste quite a lot when I'm coding. Control X is cut. Control V is paste. And if you just want to copy, it's Control C. I'm going to use that a lot. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go paste, 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 and then just add in the two, three, four. Quick way to put it in, and there we should be able to see the types of all four of those. So they should be int, float, string, and boolean. So if we run that, int, float, string, and boolean. 
Okay, you can see that there, int, float, string, and boolean. So if we jump back over to our code here, all right, now that we've kind of got a basic idea on the types, we should probably just quickly talk about printing those types. And again, variables are treated very similar to other things. You can grab them and put them in a print statement. That's fine. It's not gonna print the name of your variable. It's gonna print the actual value inside of that container. Okay, so if I get rid of these and I just try maybe printing them, so print my bar, and we look at what happens, save. And we see it prints 10. It didn't print my var, it printed the value inside of it, right? And if I went back to my code and I changed it from 10 to 15, and I saved, now it prints 15. Right, so that variable is holding the value, and when I access it by its variable name, I'm not accessing the name, I'm accessing the content of that variable. And that's really a core concept in everything to do with programming, is this idea of variables. So let's go back in here and let's look at not just printing a single variable, but maybe printing a concatenated string. And there's a big word for us, concatenated. So concatenation is a, a means of taking two strings and just kind of stramming them together. So, you know, if you've got a, a Lucy bracelet and you've got a, a Freddy bracelet and you want to string them onto the same bracelet, you just kind of take the beads off of one and throw them on the other. and You're just adding them together, right? So this is called string concatenation. And we can use this right inside of our print statements. So let's say I wanted to print this a little nicer. Like I wanted to print something like quotation marks. My first variable is... And notice I end the quotation marks right there. So you got a couple options how you want to handle this. You can put a comma and do an end equals blank and then do another print statement where you print the variable or you can do a plus sign which concatenates strings. Now we're going to introduce a new function here, str, and then I put my variable name in. Now if the variable was already a string type, you don't need the str function there. If the variable is any other type than a string or a character, then you need the str because that ensures that it's two strings being concatenated together or being smushed together. And it's not trying to maybe do math, but then maybe just smush them together. And it gets a little confused when you don't tell it that they're both strings. So this forces it to turn my variable, whatever its value is, in this case 15, it stops thinking about it, it, stops thinking about it as 15 and it just thinks of it as a one and a five smushed together. And it knows how to deal with that. That's just a string of characters. So it can smush those on with other characters and everything should work fine. You'll notice, and I'll show you, if you don't have that, what happens. So if I run this, my first variable is 15. So it works. It's nice and clean. That's exactly what we're looking for. So if I pop back over to Nobel Plus and I just delete that str, might as well show you an error because you're going to get errors. That's just part of programming. So let's run this now and let's see what happens. So I get trace back, most recent call last, this file, line 11, print it here. It's a type error, can only concatenate str, not int to str. So it's saying I cannot concatenate an integer and a string. I need them to both be strings. Where is it? It's on line 11. So let's jump back over to our code. Hey look, Nobel Plus Plus has line numbers. So line 11 here, is this print statement and it doesn't like this concatenation. So I put back my strip, zoom, save, and I run it and it works. Okay, cool. All right, so let's just add this for each of my variables. Two, var three, var four. Now var three is already a string. I don't need the str there, but you know what? Let's leave it and see if we get an error. I'm going to guess we don't get an error. If you're ever wondering, I wonder what happens if, just do it. Save it, run it, see what happens. I learned so many things about programming, and my students learned so many things about programming, but just trying something. I mean, worst case scenario, it doesn't work. And you see an error, and maybe you learn something through that process. That's a good thing. So we run it, we have our nice little prints. My first variable is 15. Oh no, I didn't change the words. It was supposed to say first, second, third, fourth. Let's change it. My second, my third, my fourth. You could see hard coding things kind of sucks because when something's wrong, you got to change it in a bunch of places. So just something to be aware of. Variables are super awesome and we're going to use them all the time. 
we run it again. There we go. My first variable is 15. My second variable is 0 0.5. Third variable is Superman. My fourth variable is true. And we're printing values. We're concatenating strings. We're using variables. The world's a good place. We can change these, obviously, and things can happen. Pretty soon, we're going to learn user input. The user can input those values. Even better. And if we eventually start reading and writing for files, those values can be stored in a file. We pull it from the file. There's so many possibilities. Okay, You can do all kinds of messy stuff using the triple quotes, too. So really quickly, let's just turn this whole thing into a big triple quote print statement. Should be fun. Okay, now this isn't going to work yet. So all I did was I, I got rid of a bunch of prints, triple quotes at the beginning, triple quotes at the end. So what I'm going to have to do here is kind of end my triples, print my variable, right? And then I'm going to have to restart my triples, okay? And then I'm basically going to do this for all of these. And then we're going to break it down. So now let's have a look at this. So I'm going to start a print statement with triple quotes. I've got a literal string here. My first variable is, and I'm ending that big triple quote string. I'm concatenating the value of my var. And then I'm adding and restarting the triple quotes. Can't put the plus sign at the end of the line. Python gets a little iffy about that. And then, so I put the triple quotes there. My second variable is, and so on. My third variable is, fourth variable is, and then I end it with the triples and the uh, brackets. And actually, I can end that right there on the bracket. I don't need those extra triples at the end. So let's save that and run that so you can see that it runs the same. So there you go. My first variable is this, second, third, fourth. They're all on their own line. It's just we did it using the triple quote statement at the end and kind of stringing it all together instead of a bunch of different statements. And it doesn't really matter. Okay. There's always going to be flexibility in how you want to write these programs. It's just going to be where your understanding is, right? So you're going to have to piece some things together to figure it out. So this was our first big lesson. Big topics. Variables is a huge topic. It's going to come up over and over again. And it's going to be obviously important that we figure it out. Uh, but we need to talk about the challenge. Let's do our first challenge. So your first challenge is going to be a game of Mad Libs, but no user input because we're not there yet. So we're going to be hard coding the values. So it's going to look something like this. You might have to Google a Mad Lib example. Uh, I'll put a link in the, uh, in the description for you. So let's have a look here. So I'm not going to give away the farm on this one, but I'll give you a little bit of a, a sneak peek. So if I run my Mad Lib, okay, you can read through it if you want to. Today I went to the zoo. I saw a hairy book jumping up and down in its tree. He ran slowly through the large tunnel that led to its fuzzy computer and so on. But what I did here is in the program, I created a bunch of string variables, word one all the way to word 12. And this was because the Madlib generator I found online had 12 words. And it told me the first one's an adjective, second one's a noun, and so on. And all I did is I, I just hard-coded some values, just like if you were asking your friend to give me a noun, give me an, an adjective, give me a verb, and you were writing them all down. I'm just writing them down here in the code, and I'm hard-coding them. And then further down in my code is going to be a print statement where I print this full Madlib using the variables. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for with this challenge is this, this little bit of a Mad Lib generator. So it's really just that print statement that you're going to work on, that big triple quote or maybe multiple print statements with different, um, different line endings to kind of string it all together um, using our variables because that's the key here is using those variables. And then if you played the game again with someone else, you could write in their values. You would not have to change the print statement and you'd be Mad Libbing. All right, that's it for Unit 1, Topic 2. So good luck with the challenge. I hope it goes well for you. Come on back in topic number three where we're going to look a little bit more at console programs, math, and some randoms, as well as looking at that crucial piece, which is user input. Don't forget, if you like the content, be sure to like the video, share, subscribe, uh, and keep at the lessons. You don't want to quit on lesson number two. You want to make it through the course. Have a great day.